So I don't know about you, but sometimes when you're working on something, you get halfway through it and you can sort of picture it being used and achieving something that can be used in a completely different way. Welcome back, my name is Josh. I am the community manager and one of the lead developers here at Moby Diction. And today we're gonna to be talking about pages. If you've used our form builder, can also be used to create static pages for your users. So a bit of background, we were working on our form builder and towards the end of it, we had an idea, now that we've got a user-friendly way to build forms with the inputs and the elements that we had, that we could just remove the inputs and give users an ability to create static informational pages, so similar to normal web pages, to be used in their portal. So if you wanted an informational type page that didn't require any user interaction, you could actually have that as well and put it on the menu and just do that. So we're gonna jump into the project we use for our form series. I'm gonna quickly show you how to set up a page, some formatting tricks that I particularly like, and then how you can save that page and add it to your side menu so your users can access it. So here we are back in Moby Connect and we'll jump straight back into the forms project we worked on in our previous series. And if you look along the left hand menu here, we don't have the page builder. So what we're gonna do to rectify that, it's gonna go over settings, edit the menu, and then choose from our feature list, pages. We'll just drag that out there, stick it at the bottom, and then save. Our menu will then update, and now we have pages. And if you've worked with the form builder before, this will be very familiar to you. If not, just follow along. Step one, name your page. So we'll just call this my new page because we're really original and we'll save that. That will then save the instance as a draft so we can go back to it anytime. And you'll notice along the top here, we've got the page builder, which of course is this ad block like this, HTML editor and CSS editor. Now, if you're into coding, you understand HTML and CSS yourself, you can actually go in here and build or copy and paste in a full HTML and full CSS uh, of a page that you've designed outside. So if you've got a completely custom idea for a page that you want to apply and outside of our page builder, you can do that. Now, just keep in mind that you can only use either the page builder or HTML. As soon as the editor detects that you've done manual HTML using the HTML editor, it will prioritize that over the page builder. So you're gonna have to make sure that you either do one or the other. First things first, we add a block. Now that we've got our block with the one column, we'll add an element. You'll notice that of course, elements are the only things available because of course this is designed not to be interacted with in the same way a form would. So first off, we'll start with a header block and we'll say, this is my heading because we're super original and we'll make sure this is centered. We'll choose a large and then we'll just put 48 by 62 line height, uh, which is my go-to for headers and we'll hit save. If we hit preview, there we go. You see it's loaded the font and we've got about a 30 at the top and bottom for our padding and it's nice and centered. Boring old white header though, we don't want that. So let's add a background image. There we go, and a picture of Town Hall in Sydney, and we'll save that. Now if we go preview, you'll notice a few problems here. Obviously black on black or black on a dark image not looking great, and because there's very little padding, you can barely see anything. So first off, we're gonna add a color overlay. So we'll go to color overlay here, and we'll choose black, and as you'll see, that's applied a black color overlay to the image. So when we go back to preview, it's got a black color overlay there. Next, we wanna increase our padding at the top and bottom to make sure that we can see a decent portion of the image and save. Actually, because I force the color from the header block itself, uh, we're gonna have to select white here as well. And now we go back to preview. This is my heading and we can see more of the image. If you're happy with that, away we go. We've got our header nailed. So we're just gonna quickly add a second header block and we'll keep that regular and we'll say sub heading and we'll center that and we'll color it white and we'll leave the default size a bit too close for my liking so we'll go in and we'll add a spacer and we'll drag that in between and the spacer by default will have about 16 pixels so yeah, that should work so we've got a heading and we've got a subheading and now we see a decent portion of the image behind Okay, so next we want to add a, a little informational section. Maybe we want a video and some uh, paragraph text or something like that. So let's say on the right hand side, let's have a video. So we can add the video player there. Just grab a embed link from over here and you can just grab the actual embed link from that and then you can paste it in 
right there. And then on the left hand side, we might want to have another header and this header will just be uh, left aligned. We'll semi bold that and we'll put it at 22 pixels uh, by a good rule of thumb is generally 1.3 times the size of your font for the line height. Keeps everything nice and spaced out. Uh, for the sake of argument, we'll leave the default text in place there. And we'll just check the block settings here. Got that in there. And a V content aligned will actually be important here. And it's uh, usually on by default. So we can leave that as is. And when we go here, you'll see that it's aligned this nicely to the video uh, in the center because if it wasn't vertically aligned there'd be a lot of white space below and it wouldn't look as good so if we go back to edit here not enough of a gap in between those but we probably don't want the full 16 pixels 16 pixels by default so we'll just save that and we'll check that again there we go it's a nice little space there in between uh the header and the text. So we'll go back to edit here. So the last thing we'll do is, because we're creating a simple page, just one more row with maybe a gallery of images. So we'll just get rid of the default image for starters. And we'll just add, actually we might keep the default image. I'll add that back in. And just a few other photos. There we go. And grid's fine. We'll save that, preview. And there we go. So super simple page, obviously, but you understand the concept. We can build this out and have it, you know, be pretty extravagant if we wanted to, um, you know, but heading, subheading, little section, maybe a video, some images. And that took all of five minutes to set up. Um, there are predetermined formatting stuff. As you can see, like a lot of this uh, padding and stuff was already there uh, but anything you want to edit there is usually a nice little user-friendly understandable tool tip for spacing design and alignment obviously changing your background and color we did that for the header um, vertically aligning or unvertically aligning depending of course what formatting you're looking for uh, and then column margin We've set the column margin to 30 pixels by default, which is what's controlling the separation between this left and right column here. Or of course you have a four column in between all four. So you can increase or decrease that uh, depending on of course what suits your content. So there's a lot of choice out there. Now we're ready with our page. We're pretty happy with it. Last step of course is to save it. We'll just publish that page. Now we've got it here. We can of course view it and this is what it's going to look like to the end user obviously without all the editing bits that we were looking at before so we can just go back and of course our last step is to make this available to our users so we'll go up to settings here on the right uh, top right hand side and you'll see the edit menu function which we used at the beginning to add pages to the menu but instead of a feature we can now look at our pages and we'll have this page here so you can just tap the little plus button or of course drag it out and then we've got my new page and of course you can rename uh, the my new page to whatever you want the the menu item to be called so we can call this you know customer info for example and we can update the menus icon as well and you know we want it to be a very exciting apple there we go and then we just hit uh, update menu item and then save and then when the menu loads there we go my new page and we've got easily accessed and if we go back to the menu editor there, obviously I added it for the owner, so we could see. But if we are just adding it for our users, we can select the user menu from here. We can say we don't want our users to have access to any of the features other than, you know, tasks, because we want them to complete tasks. We do want to make sure that they're able to see that page at the top of the menu. And don't forget, of course, much the same way as the page I just showed you, the forms can be added to the menu as well. Using that induction checklist from the other series that we did, we can also add that to the menu and then save that. So in future, when we use the user management feature to invite other people at the user level to our platform, they will be able to just see those three menu items, which was the which is the page we just created, the form from Rada video, and of course the tasks feature, so we can assign those users tasks as well. If you want to learn more about Moby Connect, make sure you check out the other videos on our channel, which cover other Moby Connect features and show you the potential of the things that you can achieve when combining them together. I hope you had fun. I know I did, and I'll see you next time.